welcome everybody. I'm Cyril Pettit. I'm the Executive Director of HESI, and it's a pleasure to welcome all of you here to the 2016 HESI Annual Meeting. Um, today I'm going to actually, we're going to do it a little differently. I'm going to be co-presenting with my friend and colleague, Tim Pastor, who's also the HESI President. Uh, so if you end up liking this tag team format, then let us know. And if you don't? If you don't, I have a teenage daughter at home, so I'm used to a lot of criticism, so you can let me know that too. Um, so we can just run with this however you want. Uh, so when I start to think about how to structure a presentation and really how to capture what Hesse's done over a year, I often try and think of a common theme, a key word, a phrase that really synthesizes what it is that we've done. So as I thought about today's presentation, I ran through a lot of things and nothing was just quite landing. And then it really occurred to me that it, the best word to capture what Hesse's done over the last year was actually not a word at all, but it was a number, the number three. So the number three is actually pretty significant for this organization and her will give you a little hint as to why historically. But Tim and I are going to talk a little bit about why we think it continues to be very important, but in a slightly different context than before. So I'm going to leave you with that little teaser and come back to that later. Um, but in the interest of, of getting everybody thinking about things that come in threes, um, we're going to start with my now patented warm-up quiz to get everybody going and hopefully get a little interaction here with the audience. Um, and realize that I forgot to bring up my notes that we're going to team me up on this, so I'm going to do my best. I'll help you out. Um, so the first item that we have on our quiz, uh, let's see if anybody recognizes what this group of three is. Special bonus points from three monkeys. This is hear no evil, hear no evil, see no evil. Does anybody know where these are actually located? My Japanese colleagues? Oh, I got that, yes. Yes, thank you. See, I didn't need to bring my notes after all. I was saved. Um, yes, so these are actually three, the three monkeys, which I did not realize are originally from a shrine in Nikko, Japan. So one set of three. How about these guys? It's a little bit tricky because they're a representation of something that it comes off the page. Witches of Three witches? Fairs, foul, foul is fair. Yeah, Shakespeare. Yep, three there witches that started Macbeth. <laughs> okay, so this next one, this one is a little bit gratuitous, but I just thought it would be fun to say I actually had a talk um, that had the count from Sesame Street in it. Um, so today's talk is brought to you by the number three for those of you who have children who grew up watching Sesame Street. Um, but since we're going to try and move from Sesame Street to something a little bit more academic, um, here's another uh, gentleman who made a, a good career out of the number three, this is our friend Pythagoras. Um, so he certainly did quite well in uh, spending a lot of time talking about the relationship between things with three sides. So that three is important both in terms of kind of social and cultural things, uh, but it's actually a pretty important linguistic device as well. So there is a, a very famous um, southeastern orator uh, from Virginia that many of you will recognize who used that pattern of three things to convey important messages in a speech. So we've got our friend Thomas Jefferson, whose home is, is just a couple of hours from here in Charlottesville, Virginia, who used the phrase life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So it's that three-part harmony um, to describe and bring importance to his words. Um, it can also be used in linguistic devices for rather less austere messages, um, and can be used to set up a joke, right? So there's other Southeastern orators who use this device. A dog, a toxicologist, and a politician walk into the bar, and here's the Southeastern <laughs> orator, Tim Pastor. So now that we've probably hit rock bottom in terms of telling jokes <laughs> and Sesame Street, we really are going to talk about science. Um, and the number three is, is very significant in Hesse's history. And as, as Herman mentioned, Hesse was really founded on this tripartite concept, the academia, government, industry. And this was the logo, the first logo we had as an organization back from probably 2003, maybe, four. Um, and you can see it's that three-sided triangle representing who constituted the organization. And while that remains a very important part of who we are still, um, 
I say that, that things have grown and changed for us as an organization over the years. And right now, HESI is an organization that still maintains academia, government, and industry, but we have broadened out those elements um, in the triangle, in the partnership of the organization. So we now include a number of research institutes, a number of foundations that are actively partnering with our projects and our programs. Uh, we are working with a number of medical centers. Um, so the group that constitute HESI currently is the three that we all knew and loved, um, continue to be part of us, and at least another three, and likely to continue to grow as we develop as an organization. So what we would like to do today is spend a little bit of time talking to you about uh, where HESI has been um, over the past year, and particularly in the context of our strategic plan, how we see ourselves growing moving forward and broadening um, based on this number three concept with a little bit different twist uh, than we had historically. And so to get to that point, I'm now going to pass it over to Tim and let him walk th you through a bit of where the organization has been, particularly in the context of developing the strategic plan. Okay, Tim, all you. Nope. So a toxicologist, a dog, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to tell bad jokes here, but I am going to talk to you a bit about how do you capitalize on this number? Is it three plus three? Is it three times three? Is it three Q? Uh, how do you capitalize on that? And that's what the strategic plan is all about and what the board, the ex executive committee, Cyril herself have worked tremendously hard on to come up with something that charts a future takes acknowledgement of where we've been and puts that together into something that makes HESI even a better organization than it already is. And so we got together, as you recall, uh, last year, and the objective there was to put together a strategic plan that's going to take us out for the next four or five years. Not uh, exactly a map uh, that's going to take us down I-95 to a certain spot but it's going to give us some stepping stones to go ahead with. And those stepping stones are really crucial. Well, let me tell you how we did this, just to remind you of what happened about a year ago right now. Uh, you will recall that we were meeting right here in Washington, D.C. We got together with a lot of different people, and we put together a lot of different flip charts with a lot of different points on there, certainly more than three. 3 times 3 times 3, 3 cubed, 3 to the 30th, whatever you want to put it. It was a tremendous amount of information. And in the subsequent time, after June of last year, the staff, the executive committee, committees working on this over and over again, put together what we thought looked like a pretty good plan. And the first one that we came up with looked like this. We showed that in January of this year to the board. And the board looked at it and went, hmm, mm, I'm not sure about that. It's, yeah, there was some weeping that went on. Uh, they didn't see three things here, they saw four columns. And you'll notice as well that we intentionally put uh, the words in, well, if you can read them, you've got better eyes than I do, certainly. But the, stat, the, uh, the board looked at that and said, you know, there's something about this that, that we can't quite comprehend. There, it's, it's too complex. Uh, you need to make this into something far more simple in the first place. So we decided to take a lesson from our good friend. <coughs> Anyone know who this is? William. St. Tim. <laughs> St. Tim. St. Tim. Okay, he wins over here. You get a free membership from Exxon. <laughs> this is actually William of Ockham. What did William of Ockham say? Ockham's razor. Ockham's razor, the law of parsimony. In other words, don't make things more complex than they need to be. And that's what the board was really telling us. It said, you know, it's just, it's got more moving parts and pieces and complex language. Bring it down to something that we can all understand. The second bit of information the board provided was you know, you really need, need to make this into a story. You need to have an arc that says, this is where HESI is, this is what it does, and what we should be doing. That was the objective that we were looking for, uh, is what the board was asking us to do. 
The third bit of advice, hmm, three bits of advice they gave us in threes. The third bit was uh, what you really need to do is have something that not only tells a narrative, but one that you can tell to external groups. You're going to go to foundations, you're going to go to corporate groups, you're going to go to academics, government. You should be able to tell that story, that narrative, regardless of who the audience is. So, William of Ockham, make it simpler, make it into a narrative, and be able to tell that to folks in the corporate world, academics, foundations, wherever it happens to go. Three very good pieces of advice that we got. And so we went back to work on that. And we said, number one, we have to be fundamentally attentive to what we derived last year in the challenge statement, which is what you see down there below for the next number of years. What's that challenge statement? Well, you can see here that we want to be an essential resource for convening. We want to convene diverse expertise that's right here in this room and translate that science into application for the protection of human and environmental health. Three points, right? It looks to me like we want to convene, we want to translate, and we want to protect. Three pieces, once again. And that's the foundation that we're going to build up to come up with a strategic plan with a thought that we will go from convening experts we will translate that information in the science, and we will protect human and environmental health. There's the narrative, there's the art. We take things in, we do things with them in the wheelhouse of what HESI is all about, and we use that information in an effective way, in an applicable way, to make sure it's protecting human and, and environmental health. So, what we want to do here is based on this central statement here, down below, the challenge statement, which, by the way, I, the way I put it, when I talk to people about HESI, and they say, well, what's HESI all about? I could read in this statement, certainly. But ultimately, what we're saying is, HESI is a place to go when you want stuff done. HESI is a place you want to go. If you've got a great idea, and you want to make that into something useful, and actually apply it, HESI is a place to go. And the way we do that is by convening, translating, and protecting. And so what I'd like to do is, tr is turn this over for the first one on convening back to my cohort up here to talk a bit about that first bit of strategy that we have on convening expertise, knowledge, and people. Thanks. So the way we're going to structure this, we'll walk through each of these three elements and talk a little bit about wh what that means to the organization, what it is that we're doing now, specifically in the last year, and then look forward in the context of the strategic plan as to how we're going to implement that goal over the next three to four to five years. So uh, with our basic counting lesson again, we're starting with number one, um, which is convene. And the, the mission of HESI's convening function is really to connect the best expertise uh, to define both needs and solutions. So let's talk about how we've done this over the past year. Uh, the organization, HESI, uh, has brought together more than 250 different organizations as partners within our projects and our programs. Uh, the 600 minds, I think it actually may be more than that. I feel like every time we count, we get a different number. But certainly 600, 800 uh, or so different individuals have participated in HESI programs just in the last 12 months. We have had participants from, from five continents, thanks to Michelle bringing somebody in from Antarctica uh, for one of her workshops. So <laughs> time, time. That's true. Well, it's OK. It counts. Um, so uh, we, we have had a, a broad, broad reach. Um, and through our emerging issues process, for those of you who are familiar with that, this, this little map down here, those red dots show uh, the countries of origin where people have submitted proposals to HESI over the past year. So not only is it 10 countries, it's actually a pretty diffuse spread and diverse spread of different uh, locations, uh, much more diverse than we had ever seen before uh, in terms of submitting ideas to, to the organization. Just to give you a visual of, of what convening looks like at HESI, um, the numbers are great, but it's really about the people and the interactions. And 
hopefully you can see it, a little hard to see from this angle here. The top um, uh, is Michelle's uh, recent effluent testing, um, effluent safety workshop that she uh, held in Paris, and they set the standard for convening by designing their own t-shirts. Um, so they all have matching Save the Fathead Minnows t-shirts. Um, so she has raised the bar on what it means to run a HESI meeting, um, and some other views of, of HESI meetings and workshops over the last year. And the, the graphic in the middle there, the new diversity, uh, to the point around foundations. So this is a group of foundations, public health agencies, environmental health agencies, water quality and water protection agencies that have partnered with HESI on programs over the last year um, that are new to our space. So that's a pretty big bump um, in both the scope and the focus of organizations who have come to HESI because they recognize the value of the convening function that we serve. So we, we're doing well, we're consistently doing better, but how do we continue to improve and grow in this area over the next several years? And obviously that comes down to strengthening our role to serve as a convener. So the board, in, in looking through the, the ideas and input that you all put forward at our strategic planning session last year, narrowed it down to four key elements that they want to focus on. Uh, the first is to improve organizational foresight. So how do we do better as, as an organization about thinking around where, is, where are the topics where people are going to value convening um, and sharing ideas and sharing expertise? How do we raise awareness in that same vein as HESI as a solution to solve um, those issues as they emerge? And then the last two are, are sort of two sides of the same coin around cre creating um, efficient means to connect ideas and infrastructure and surveying for fast-breaking ideas as they evolve. And I won't get into the details right now, other than to say your board spent three or four hours this morning talking about specific projects and proposals and plans that are going to help us to implement and realize these goals over the next couple of years. And these are ideas and structures that you should expect to hear more about and learn more about, and we're happy to engage you in. But it is the, the intent of the organization to, to try and fulfill all of these things by identifying new scientific mapping exercises and taking forward additional project mechanisms that are more responsive um, and more efficient uh, to address fast-breaking issues. So there are plans in place, uh, and we're happy to share those later on. But this is the idea behind uh, moving forward with the strategic plan in the convening aspect. So what comes after one, two? Uh, and what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about what it means to translate that information, tell you something about where we've been as a HESI organization, what we've done, and what, where the strategic plan intends to take us. Uh, so if you think about, well, actually, how do you do that? How do you translate? Uh, I think the image that's always in my mind is of kind of like a boiler room. And in fact, that's what the HESI machinery is all about. When you have an idea, as Cyril was talking about, and you know people that can work on that, where are you going to go with that information, that idea? You want to get something done. One thing you can do is come to HESI, and you can use that boiler room, that machinery that's there to make things happen. Uh, and we've got really, really good examples of how that's happening right now. Uh, if you look at uh, how we drive programs in the organization to completion, uh, it, you don't have to look very hard. And I would encourage you to look at the brand new website. What is it, four days old now? Uh, it has a tremendous amount of information on there that uh, tells you the story about the depth and the breadth of what Cassie is doing. And I have to tell you, it's very, very, very impressive. And I've got four examples up here. There's many, many more that we can go to. In the upper left, it's the uh, cardiac uh, committee looking at uh, voltage-sensitive cardiomyocytes. Uh, upper right is the genomics committee. Uh, that some of the output and some of the uh, information that they're pulling together. Uh, I think uh, the uh, Michelle, you're working on this one on animal alternatives and the and the environmental and eco framework. Uh, so looking for animal alternatives there. Lower right is uh, sustainable uh, chemical alternatives. So we're looking for green chemistry and characteristics that would actually tell you something about that. Those are just 
four examples of committee work that's going on by the volunteers that we have from corporate, academic, government, uh, NGOs, bringing together that kind of knowledge and ideas into something that's substantive. Substantive, and you can actually see it right here. But you can keep going. You can look at a lot of other uh, committees that are producing a tremendous amount of effort in pulling together those ideas and people uh, that's so important in that wheelhouse of translating in the HESI environment. Um, and when you think of where we have gotten to in the last year, I want to point out two particular programs that illustrate not only where we are right now, but where HESI is going. And this has to do with changing the way we are funding the projects that are important to human and environmental health. And the one you see up on the top is the ELSA uh, UPARD Foundation grant. Uh, and this is a shout out on both of these to Jen Pearson for writing grants. This is out of the normal way of doing things at HESI uh, to get a grant that you'll hear a bit more about when Cyril talks about the Thrive program. Uh, actually, it does have a place on the web that you can go to and get more information, but we'll save that for a bit later. Suffice it to say, it's a very nice grant, and it's a, a process where HESI is actually part of granting and getting things going in that space. And you'll hear more about that in a little bit. On the bottom, it's the, uh, and I always lose this one, but it's the broad agreement, broad agency agreement with FDA. Again, a grant that uh, Jen Pearson worked on. We, we now have the money in place to do some work on cardiomyocytes and looking at stem cells being used in the, in the research uh, 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 environment to look at different effects on cardiomyocytes. Fantastic stuff, and it comes from a grant from FDA. Very unusual, not something we've typically done, uh, but it illustrates exactly what we have done over the last year and kind of a springboard into the future. Now, what do we want to do then as a strategic goal? We want to keep the things that we've been doing and doing well. The corporate sponsorship of tremendous programs that are going on, the staffing of those. Uh, we want to look for different ways of getting uh, more kinds of PARD foundation and BAA sorts of grants, of course. We want to grow Hesse's ability to translate. That boiler room is just going to get bigger. Or like somebody said, we can just work the staff twice as hard, right? Okay. Oh yeah, we're smiling over that one, sure. But you know, to grow HESI means that you have to have a strategic plan to do that. And that strategic plan that people came up with over the course of the last year is as follows. We want to focus on data and decision making. And you can see something on the COMPARE program. Uh, that is uh, a database that is being put together uh, on protein allogenicity. Uh, it takes off on previous information and makes it even bigger. That's just an example of focusing data on decision making. So that's a strategic goal for us, focus data on decision making. In addition, we're looking to identify knowledge gaps uh, that uh, would lead to better safety decisions. And you can see a couple of publications uh, there that illustrate what we've already been doing in that area and we're going to grow that. Lower left, generate transparent and reproducible data. I mean, these are all buzzwords that are very important. Very important because what we want to do is enhance the ability for people to get at databases. We want to enhance the ability uh, to get reliable data, which is what reproducibility in part is all about, reproducible data. But this is what we're talking about is this wheelhouse of what HESI is, right? How does that wheelhouse work? That wheelhouse works because of the people that you see in the lower right-hand corner. And I wish that was a full slide by itself, showing the staff that are sitting right, right back here. If you didn't have the amazing people that are on staff here at HESI, these projects wouldn't fly the way they do. And so a big shout out to the staff here, and I'd like to have a round of applause for the folks back here. do is encourage you to spend a few moments just introducing yourself to the staff and get to know them a little bit better. They are all marvelous people, well-educated, and highly engaged folks. 
And of course, a big shout out as well to the executive director, Cyril Pettit, who I think is one of the most phenomenal executive directors you could ever imagine. Big round of applause. So, you know, that's really the translate part. So we convene ideas and people, we put that into the boiler room and generate something that's really good. Now we're moving on to the third phase. I wrote his script, by the way, so <laughs> he did very well. Uh, so the, the third point in here is the, the protect aspect. And you know, this is, this, is the, this is the money shot. This is what it's really about, right? It's about implementing science for a safer and more sustainable world. So how do we do this as an organization? We do this by developing data that supports data-driven decisions that protect human health and the environment. So HESI as an organization is not delivering vaccines on the ground. We're not putting filters in waterways. But what we are do is doing is generating science that are allowing people to make decisions about safety that are informed, that are reproducible, that are protective. And over the last year, we published uh, approximately 30 manuscripts, held 20 different workshops, uh, we've had hundreds of citations of, of HESI's work just in the last year. I mean, it's thousands when you start to accumulate it, but just in the past year. And many of those papers have been incredibly highly downloaded, so over 10,000 downloads is probably substantially more than that uh, when you look across some of these publications that we have made accessible through our open access program. The organization is, is actively engaging in the data-driven decisions community through its partnerships with groups like the OECD, participation in the ICH processes. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to bring the science that these committees generate to the table and to be part of that um, decision process and showing where information is available. Uh, additional aspect that, that we think it's important to highlight that perhaps is not traditionally where people thought of HESI, but has been increasingly an area of focus and I anticipate will continue, um, is our role in, in training. Um, and developing case studies and workshops that really give people the opportunity to roll up their sleeves, to engage with the data, to engage with decision frameworks, and to work with partners from different sectors to really talk through those issues. It's an opportunity that, that's hard to get from a paper, it's hard to get from a lecture, but it's something that's unique that, that HESI has increasingly offered. And here's a, a couple of visuals. Um, the, the top pictures that you recognize, I think, all of those faces in this room here today uh, is the Risk 21 uh, leadership team, Michelle and Angelo and Alan and Tim, um, who uh, spent uh, 10 days, eight days, in China and Taiwan this past fall, uh, conducting a series of case study training <coughs> workshops with um, academics and regulatory scientists in the environmental, food, um, and drug safety sectors. And, the, the really exciting thing, as you can see from these pictures, people are leaning over, they're engaging, they're talking, they're looking at the data, they're working through examples, they're working with um, our team as, as mentors and foils to help them address questions and help understand their questions and their applications. It was really, a, I think, an incredibly impactful experience and judging by the energy level that Michelle and the crew came back with, um, it, was, it was beneficial on all sides. Um, but that, that is one example, but there are certainly others. Our developmental uh, repro program uh, had two actually very effective case study programs where they developed applied case studies looking at the, uh, the FDA's new pregnancy and lactation labeling rule and provided a platform for very um, pragmatic discussions about the interpretation of toxicology data to a, to a clinical label and how that is understood um, by physicians and how to record that information. Um, additionally, uh, we've, we've had opportunity to be part of other trainings. Our um, cell therapy program is brand new and shiny, but has already begun to do some, some outreach and training webinars. And uh, we also uh, wanted to highlight that not only do we support data-driven decisions through trainings and webinars, but publication um, is an important conduit as well. And uh, you can see highlighted here, uh, this is a paper out of the Genomics Committee this past year that won SOT uh, Board of Publications Best Paper Award. 
Uh, we've, we've won a number of these over the years, but are really um, proud of the work that uh, the committee did in, in achieving that recognition. So these are all critical elements of, of how HESI helps to protect. But it's important to continue to step back and remember what it is we're trying to protect as an organization. It's about safe foods, safer foods and consumer goods and resources, safe and effective medicines, uh, sustained environmental quality and environments, and ultimately protecting and promoting discovery uh, in the advancement of all of these. Together, these represent uh, why it is that we do what we do as an organization. So how do we do this better? How do we enhance our ability uh, for HESI to uh, have uh, a positive impact on human and environmental health? So there's multiple opportunities to do this as an organization. Um, one in the top right there is to continue to support these very interactive, hands-on type of scientific forums. And WISC 21, um, actually you can see it there and under training, so I'll lump those together. Um, RISC-21 is going to continue its, its training voyage um, and outreach to Brazil um, in, in just a matter of days and we'll be conducting um, some outreach trainings um, and case study practice sessions down there in a few days. Um, we'll also have a, a workshop coming up this uh, October, September, October, I can't see the date. Um, on uh, celiac and a detection of allergy associated um, with wheat gluten um, that will be at the Food Allergy Conference in Italy that's um, under the auspices of our Protein Allergenicity Committee. Um, and those are just examples. So these kinds of things will continue to grow as we implement HESI's strategy going forward. Um, we're also very um, pleased to have a Future Leaders Travel Fund, for those who don't know about it. That is actually a financial resource and award program that HESI offers um, to encourage scientists who have not been part of HESI previously to have the opportunity to come to one of our technical programs to contribute and to engage and to be part of them. Uh, Dr. I'm going to say it wrong, Muniaris? <laughs> yes, um, is here from the University of Buenos Aires, and she is our, our, our winner, and so attended uh, the meeting today under the Travel Award program. So we're very pleased to have you here, um, and encourage all of you to think about um, others of your colleagues or associates who you think would be interested in attending a HESI meeting as part of this program. We'll also additionally continue to focus on the goal of putting data in the hands of decision makers. And decision makers doesn't mean equate to regulators. It, there's a huge community of decision makers, and that really, the community of HESI, you're all decision makers in all different sectors and lots of different um, walks of, of scientific life. Um, one of the ones we wanted to highlight, uh, again, the, the Genomics Committee will be submitting um, the first ever uh, genomic biomarker qualification to the US FDA in a matter of days weeks, weeks, <laughs> um, that has been the result of years of, of uh, experimental work um, and analyses from across a number of sectors, but we're incredibly proud of, of, of the effort that they put in um, and the opportunity, again, to contribute to biomarker development and the ways that those biomarkers can be used to help support safety assessment decision making in effective, um, efficient, and reproducible ways. So. With that, we get back to our, our threesome, convene, translate, and protect. Oh, I think I keep going. Um, <laughs> uh, so we have our, our three elements, and because we apparently can't count to any number other than three, in closing, we're going to leave you with three thoughts. <laughs> um, and the first of these is this. Uh, your board is taking action. I've alluded to this earlier, but the strategic plan is not just a piece of paper, it's not just a set of images, it's actually missions and ideas and programs and projects that the organization has started and is planning to implement over the coming weeks and months and years. So we encourage you to um, reach out for more information about this. We will do our best to share that information and those new opportunities with you. Uh, but we do want to convey that um, these activities are actively in discussion at the board level, but we encourage all of you who have interest in helping us to grow the organization to get engaged. It, it's not strictly a board mission or board responsibility. The 
the second um, uh, element here um, is that while we're talking a lot about how we will change as an organization, in many ways we already have changed as an organization. Um, I'll, Tim referred to this as it's not your mama's Hesse anymore um, slide. Um, and so this one features the Thrive program, which um, any of you who've talked to me about it know I will go on and on because um, I'm so excited um, and passionate about uh, seeing this program get off the ground. So Thrive is a, a program that we started um, with the result of the grant from the Party Foundation and with support from uh, the HESI Cardiac Committee. And this is HESI's first ever seed grant program. So HESI will now become a resource to provide seed grants uh, that will help to spur research to understand uh, toxicities associated with uh, cancer therapies. So cancer patients, former cancer patients, cancer survivors are at a significantly <coughs> higher risk of secondary toxicities of chronic effects as they go through their lives. Childhood cancer survivors have a seven-fold higher risk of cardiac failure than their peers. It's a significant problem, but one that is relatively underfunded in terms of research. At the same time, our current research capabilities mean that we do have the potential to add knowledge in terms of the mechanism of these drugs, to think about protective therapies, to think about um, opportunities to understand how these things progress and whether we can do more to monitor and ultimately to make patient quality of life an active research priority. This program has, um, we just launched uh, really the end of, uh, end of last year. We've got a phenomenal advisory board with uh, the chair of uh, university pediatricians, Steve Lipschultz on the board, who was also one of the sort of fundamental leaders in, um, in understanding cardiac toxicity associated with anthracyclines. He's a pediatric cardiologist. Uh, we've got uh, Myrtle Davis, who had to step out for a phone call, Brian um, as well on the board, but we've also got the Friends of Cancer Research have, have nominated two individuals to be part of the program. The National Patient Advocacy Foundation, Rebecca Kirsch is on the program, um, at, not the program, on the advisory board. So we have announced the letter of uh, intent uh, call for proposals has gone out a couple of weeks ago. We've already gotten fantastic um, feedback and coverage in a number of different um, philanthropy and funding resources and lots of inquiries from a number of different universities and medical centers around the country. Um, so it, we're, we're looking forward to it. There'll be a last bit. There will be a um, editorial in Science Translational Medicine on this topic that we've written that'll get published in the next couple of weeks um, at the end of the month. So we're, we're, we're making an impact. We're trying to make an impact in this space and raise the visibility of HESI's um, potential to contribute in areas that we traditionally maybe didn't think of HESI as being a seed grant funding organization focusing on patient quality of life. Um, but clearly there is, there's opportunity, clearly there is the knowledge base in this organization, and then there's the need for a multi-sector and multidisciplinary group like HESI to help move the science forward in this space. So there's a poster outside, and I'll talk to you more about it later. But I'm gonna turn it over to Tim. So, along with the board actively working on a strategic plan, ways of uh, alternate funding, and a lot of other things, that's thought number one. <coughs> thought number two, of course, is that this ain't your mama's Hesse anymore. For us uh, old hands on this, we've seen a huge transition in, in how Hesse does what it does. Uh, but finally, I want to I want to bring this back to the folks here in the room, and indeed all of the representatives that come here and are part of what Hesse is all about. This is about us. And this is about thought leadership. And so when I get asked about, well, why HESI? Why would you want to convene? Why would you want to translate? Why would you want to protect? Well, the fact is, is that everyone in this room has an interest in thought leadership. You want to be out in front of this thing, working with your colleagues, no matter what group they come from, academics, government, corporate, NGOs, and working towards solutions. And I can't emphasize enough that it is us together that make the difference in making these programs live and breathe and become productive. So, our real closing, I promise, um, no more threes. Um, convene, translate, protect. It's, it's very simple sounding, but probably deceptively simple. 
Those of you who have been part of this organization uh, know that it is very hard to do it, certainly very hard to do it well and very hard to do it impactfully. That said, I hope we've given you some examples already of how we have done that impactfully over the past year. And the session that's going to follow now this afternoon is going to lay out yet more examples of how HESI as an organization has achieved um, that very straightforward, but in many ways very difficult goal. That said, um, in addition to just having you listen, um, in the, the true tradition of HESI of convening experts and then using their brain resources shamelessly, um, now that they're here, we're gonna make you work as well. So the session at five o'clock today, the session at nine tomorrow, and then the emerging issues session, I encourage you to listen to those and enjoy the science. But I'd also ask you to listen to it with this convene, translate, protect lens on it. And think about as you hear those emerging science issues, as you hear discussions around how do we do better in reproducibility in science, as you hear discussions from foundations talking about how they identify new issues and what they focus on and how they build partnerships. Put that lens on it and challenge those speakers to say, well, <coughs> how, how are you doing it and how might that fit with the HESI model? And challenge yourselves to think about where there may be new opportunities for this organization. So with that, um, I will close and just say thank you very much. And I encourage you to be creative over the next couple of days, to be challenging um, to yourselves and to, to us and to the speakers, and to have fun. So thank you very much. <laughs>